Last week, we looked at today's greatest pitchers and saw who owned them and who they own. Now, let's look at today's greatest hitters. I'm only looking at the guys who are well on the Hall of Fame track. Eight plus years of experience, so no judge, no Soto, just the well-established guys. Like last time, I have a 20 at-bat minimum and this is based on OPS. Mike Trout has been the best player in baseball, pretty much ever since he stepped foot in the field back in 2011. He loves hitting off Sean Mania from all those years in Oakland. 9 for 21, a triple, 3 homers, 4 walks, a 429 average and a 1472 OPS. He also got 30 at-bats off Mike Leake. 14 hits and 10 of them going for extra bases, 7 doubles and 3 homers, 4 walks, a 467 average and 1529 OPS. But nobody served it up to Mike Trout worse than Bartolo Colon. Obviously, he was on his way down when Trout came up, but he hit safely in 11 of 20 at bats, a double, 3 homers, 550 average and 1600 OPS. On the other side, Trout hasn't done much against Brad Peacock, 3 hits and 23 at bats. That's a 130 average. He does have a double, a triple, 8 strikeouts to go along with 4 walks, so his OPS is still a decent 520. David Price has faced off with him 27 times, Trout getting 5 hits and 5 walks, also striking out 12 times, a 185 average and 498 OPS. The guy that's given Trout the hardest time is James Paxton, 5 hits and 28 at bats, 2 of those being doubles, 11 strikeouts, a 179 average and a 483 OPS. Miguel Cabrera cost Trout two MVP awards, and this will be his final season. He's been around since 2003, so there are some older names on here. He faced Phil Hughes 46 times and has 20 hits, more than half being for extra bases, 5 doubles and 7 homers, a 435 average and 1513 OPS. Scott Feldman is another name you may have forgotten, but Cabrera got 12 hits and 20 at bats, 2 doubles, 3 homers, a 600 average and 1769 OPS. But you have to go to the Wayback Machine for the next one. Steve Trashel. He's the guy that gave up McGuire's 62nd homer, and he retired 15 years ago. But Miggy still faced him 22 times, got 12 hits, 5 doubles, 3 homers, 6 walks, a 643 average, and 1825 OPS. Those are some pretty gaudy numbers, but some other guys had his number. Kelvin Herrera was once a dominant force in the Royals' bullpen, and he held Cabrera to 4 hits and 22 at bats, 4 strikeouts, a 182 average, and a 445 OPS. Jose Barrios has picked on him in his later years. 4 for 24, 4 strikeouts, 167 average and 426 OPS. But the king of them all is Ryan Madsen. 4 hits and 30 at bats, striking him out 11 times, a 133 average and 321 OPS. Joey Votto has been around forever, but still came on 4 years after Cabrera. When you look at his 3 favorite pitchers, you can see why the Cubs hate him. Jose Quintana faced him 24 times, gave up 13 hits, 4 doubles and a homer, a 542 average and 1375 OPS. Jake Arrieta had some amazing years, but Votto still got him for 10 hits and 24 at bats, 3 doubles, 3 homers, a 417 average and a 1378 OPS. Then there's Kyle Hendricks, which is just ridiculous. 17 hits and 41 at bats, 3 doubles, 6 homers, also walked him 15 times, so his average may only be at 415, but his OPS is up at 1537. The other NL Central guys seem to have better luck. Ryan Vogelsong spent a lot of time in Pittsburgh, and he only gave up 3 hits and 20 at bats, 3 strikeouts, a 150 average and 442 OPS. Brett Anderson spent some time with the Brewers, facing Votto 24 times and gave up just 4 hits, struck him out 3 times and held him to a 167 average and 401 OPS. Paul Mahomes may have been good enough to strike out Billy Crystal, but in Pittsburgh he was also good against Votto. 3 hits and 25 at bats, 6 strikeouts, a 120 average and a 401 OPS. Bryce Harper has been a wrecking ball ever since he came into the league in 2012. Ricky Nolasco is on the wrong end of 11 hits and 23 at bats, 2 doubles, 2 homers, a 478 average and a 1326 OPS. Julio Turan faced him a whopping 47 times and gave up 19 hits, 3 doubles and 9 home runs, also walked him 12 times, so that's a 404 average and a 1576 OPS. Eric Fetty was his teammate for 2 years, but once he went to Philly, he feasted on Fetty. 11 hits and 22 at bats, a double, 6 homers, 5 walks, a 500 average and 1956 OPS. Bryce Harper left the yard on future Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw once, but Kershaw is a tough assignment for him. 5 hits and 27 at bats, 14 strikeouts, a 185 average and a 519 OPS. Matt Harvey is a similar story, only 5 for 35, taking him yard twice, but Harvey struck him out 7 times, holding him to a 143 average and 519 OPS. 
The one guy that could really tame Bryce Harper was Jeff Samarja. Three hits and 22 at-bats, nothing for extra bases. Four strikeouts, a 136 average, and 336 OPS. That's almost 200 points lower than Harvey's. Paul Goldschmidt just won his first MVP at age 35, but his best numbers came mostly off guys who aren't around anymore. Chad Bettis faced him 23 times and gave up 10 hits. Three doubles, three homers, a 435 average, and 1502 OPS. The active guy is Anthony DiScofani. 14 hits and 27 at-bats, 5 doubles, 2 homers, a 519 average and 1520 OPS. But here's the shocker, Tim Lincecum, one of the best pitchers of his generation. His best stuff came a few years before Goldschmidt made his debut. He got 15 hits and 28 at-bats, 2 doubles, 7 home runs, a 536 average and 1916 OPS. Owning Lincecum may have been a surprise, but being owned by Max Scherzer is not. 7 for 38, all 7 hits were singles. 17 strikeouts, a 184 average, and 389 OPS. Sonny Gray also hasn't given up much. One hit and 20 at-bats, 7 strikeouts, an 050 average, and 308 OPS. That's hard to beat, but Pedro Baez did it. As a reliever for the Dodgers, he faced Goldschmidt a lot when he was in Arizona, and he held him to one double over 24 at-bats, 9 strikeouts, an 042 average, and a 231 OPS. Freddie Freeman also won an MVP a few years back, and he's teed off Jose Arrena 14 times in 38 at-bats, 4 doubles and 4 homers to go along with 6 walks, a 368 average and a 1309 OPS. Julius Jacin has also faced him 20 times, giving up 8 hits, a double, a triple, 3 homers, 400 average and 1500 OPS. Then you have R.A. Dickey, the one-hit wonder from 2012, but Freeman was not fooled by that knuckleball. 11 hits and 23 at-bats, 4 doubles, 3 homers, a 478 average and a 1582 OPS. Mike Leak is back. We saw Mike Trout crush him, but for Freeman, he was tough. 2 hits and 20 at-bats, 4 strikeouts, a 100 average and 500 OPS. Zach Greinke also had his way with Freeman. 6 hits and 30 at-bats, 11 strikeouts, a 200 average and 467 OPS. Now, we see Chad Bettis again. Goldschmidt owned him, but he got the best of Freeman, unlike anyone else. Two hits and 20 at-bats, four strikeouts, a 100 average and 332 OPS. Mookie Betts has an MVP in his pocket and doesn't seem to be done going after more. He's had a good time with Kyle Gibson. Nine hits and 23 at-bats, a double and three homers, a 391 average and 1266 OPS. Also, just like Mike Trout, Sean Mania is on his hit list. 10 for 26 with two doubles and three homers, hitting 385 and a 1390 OPS. But Mookie's favorite guy to see in the mound is Joe Biagini. 10 for 21, three of those hits being homers, a 476 average and 1427 OPS. On the other side, Marcus Stroman has faced bets a ton, both guys starting out in the AL East, and he's only given up nine hits and 39 at bats, nine strikeouts, a 231 average and a 506 OPS. Marco Estrada also spent some time in Toronto, giving Mookie just 4 hits and 29 at-bats, striking him out 6 times and holding him to a 138 average and 449 OPS. Finally, you have Sonny Gray. He owned Goldschmidt, but he also owns Betts. 4 for 27, 3 of those hits being doubles, 7 strikeouts, a 148 average and a 432 OPS. Nolan Arenado has been tearing it up for 10 years now, and over the years, he's picked out some of his favorites. Matt Moore gave up 9 hits and 21 at-bats, 5 doubles and a homer, a 429 average and a 1310 OPS. Hunjin Ryu saw a lot of Arenado in their Dodger Rocky days, and he got Ryu for 16 hits and 31 at bats, 4 doubles and 4 homers, a 516 average and a 1591 OPS. Then you have James Shields, a good pitcher but will best be known for being traded for Fernando Tatis Jr. He got shelled by Arenado, 14 hits and 26 at bats, a double and 4 homers, a whopping 538 average and 1594 OPS. On the other side, Tyler Maley has only given up 4 hits and 20 at-bats, 3 strikeouts, a 200 average and 504 OPS. His new Twins teammate Kenta Maeda faced him 30 times, mostly with the Dodgers, and he held him to just 4 singles, striking him out in half of those 30 at-bats, only a 133 average and 339 OPS. But you saw it last week, and here it is again. Jacob deGrom is Arenado's arch nemesis. 2 hits and 20 at-bats, 5 strikeouts, a 100 average and 250 OPS. Last one, Jose Altuve came up the same time as Mike Trout, and he's been one of the best hitters in baseball ever since. Buzzer or no buzzer? Felix Hernandez saw him a lot in his AL West days, but Altuve got him for 17 hits and 34 at-bats, 5 doubles and 2 homers, a 500 average and 1364 OPS. 
Wade Miley has bounced around a lot, but ended up on the wrong side of Altuve 23 times, giving up 14 hits, 6 doubles and a homer, a 609 average and a 1609 OPS. That's hard to beat, but Cy Young winner Robbie Ray has been even worse, and it sucks for him. He's now in Altuve's division. 11 for 20, 3 doubles, 2 homers, a 550 average and a 1740 OPS. I gotta admit, I didn't know who Ariel Miranda was. He only appeared in 44 games over 3 seasons with Seattle, but he found himself against Altuve 21 times and only gave up 5 hits, struck him out 5 times, holding him to a 238 average and a 476 OPS. Chris Tillman was one better, 4 hits and 22 at bats, though only 1 strikeout. But still, a 182 average and 399 OPS is pretty good. Finally, you got Jose Quintana. Joey Votto loves seeing him, Altuve not so much. 5 for 27, 8 strikeouts, a 185 average and 370 OPS. Just for fun, let's talk about Shohei Otani. He's only been around since 2018, so he hasn't faced many guys 20 times, pitching or hitting. He's only faced 3 guys 20 times as a pitcher, and Jose Altuve is one of them. He's 7 for 24, 2 doubles, a 292 average and a 695 OPS. As a hitter, he loves seeing Frankie Montas. 10 for 24 with 4 homers, a 417 average and 1450 OPS. He has less fun with Framber Valdez. Only 4 for 26, 1 home run but 8 strikeouts. Hitting only 154 and an OPS of 582. That's a wrap on today's legendary hitters. Let me know if anything here surprised you, or confirmed something you thought you already knew. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here and love baseball content, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.